Well, salutations, kindred spirits, greetings, and welcome back to another weekly Wednesday magic lesson. And in this one, yep, we're talking cards again. We're talking about some key card concepts. Some key card concepts. Yeah, we're talking about the key card, one of the great secrets of magic, card magic. And I do realize that I'm getting a lot of new beginners, a lot of new students lately, and this is not a topic that I've discussed at length and it needs to be discussed. So better sooner than later, here we go with the key card. First, we'll start with the history, something I always like to talk a little bit about. This, this concept was introduced to the Magic Fraternity probably much earlier, but it was published for the Magic Fraternity by Professor Hoffman in Modern Magic. In the late 1800s, he would introduce us to key cards, how to place them, different ways to use them, and here we are doing the same thing in modern form 130 years later. Yeah, I'm going to show you some of the best tricks you can do with a key card. I'm going to show you some good ways to place the key cards, and along the way, hopefully you'll find some interesting knowledge to add to your gray matter. And hey, let's get started with what exactly is a key card? What's a key card? All right, the key card concept. The key card is a pretty simple idea. You have a known card at a known position that will tell you where other cards are. Now we're gonna use the Joker here as an easy card to track and we're gonna use the identity as the key card. But note, this card might be, it might be a thick card. Maybe it's a few cards glued together. Maybe there's a pencil dot on the back. Maybe it's marked. It could be a short card. I might trim it short or maybe put a bend in it, a crimp. The point is there's a lot of options for using a key card. The one we're gonna focus on today is just a visual known identity. And in this case, it's the Joker at the bottom of the deck. So a key card is a known card and position. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about the trick most muggles do. The most, the, this is the trick I see laymen do more than any other with the key card. They'll have you pick a card that you take one out and then you put the card, what is it? The six of diamonds. You put the card on top of the deck and then cut the deck. And then the magician, the magician goes through the deck to find the card. It's going to be easy because it's going to be to the right of the key card. There's your key card. There's the card to the right of it because it was on the bottom of the deck. When they cut the deck, it places that key card on top of it. So I, I, what I would suggest if you wanted to use a simple key card placement, instead of having your spectator put the card on top of the deck and cutting it, spread through the pack and wherever they remove the card, like say they take this card, Drop the cards above it to the table and then have them put their card back there, which is still on the top, but it's much more subtle. So there's the selection and now drop the remainder of the cards on top, positioning, positioning your uh, selection. Now, here's what I don't want to see. I don't want to see anyone going through the deck and just going, oh, there's your card. That is not entertaining. There's no drama. There's no tension. Let, let's add some entertainment to our card revelation. Just finding paper is ra rarely entertaining. So let's tell, let's tell the spectators we're gonna work on mental, mental vibes. And as I deal through the cards, I just want you to think the word stop when you see your card. I'm gonna try to absorb the mental, you know, don't overdo it, but the idea is that your spectator is going to convey a mental uh, thought to you and you're going, and all you're doing here is looking for the key card. And when you see the key, key card, the next card you deal is gonna be yours. And then you go, oh, I felt it. Was that your card? And just, just that little change in presentation, having your spectator think, stop as you're dealing through the pack, or you can have them deal through the pack for some extra fun. It just adds that extra oomph for a uh, simple pick a card trick. Now, we're gonna we're gonna explain how to ramp this trick from like a, a, a three or a four all the way up to a nine with uh, with this next piece. All right, so speaking of the think stop, one of the best methods for this type of trick is Di Vernon's Emotional Reaction. Emotional Reaction, this was published in the Inner Secrets of Card Magic. It was the first item in the book generally reserved for some pretty good material, so that'll give you an idea of how strong this can be. It's one of the best key card placements to ever be published. Let me just walk you through it. I'll explain it as though I was doing it. And this trick does start with a shuffled deck. So you can take any shuffled deck, claim it from your spectator. So here's what you explain. Think of a card. You tell your spectator to think of a card and say, spread through the deck. And when you see the card you're thinking of, put the cards above it to the table and hold that card against your heart. Hold it against your heart. Think of the card as you cut it into the packet and then bury these cards in the center of the others. 
that is Vernon's key card placement for emotional reaction. And I'll just walk you through it as though you were performing it for your spectator. So the deck has been shuffled. Vernon explains the process to the spectator. As he is explaining his process for having the card selected, it is then that he looks at the top card of the deck, which in this case is the two of spades. That's going to be my key card. And once again, it's the, it's the explanation of this process that's going to place the key card. So it's important that you get the wording of this correctly. So make sure your spectator understands that they're supposed to spread through the deck until they see the card they're thinking of. Just going to use this marked ace of spades as, as my mental selection. Instruct your spectator to table all the cards. They table the cards that were above it or in the right hand. And then they cut this packet. Tell them to hold the card against their heart. Think of the card and then cut the packet. Now look what happens. When they cut the packet, it's going to place their mental selection right to the left of the key card. It's going to remain in that position as you ask them to bury that packet in the middle of the other packet. And now all that remains for you to do is to uh, take the card to the left of the, of the key card. That will be their selection. As explained uh, previously on the key card revelations, don't just, you know, don't just go and, yeah, and uh, that's your card. You know, use, use maybe hold their wrist and say, let me feel your pulse as I run across. Or, or they can hold your wrist and you feel their tension. Or maybe just tell them to, to think stop as they see their card as you're dealing the cards. Anything, anything besides, there's your card. You know, that's just not good. Consider that key card placement in conjunction with a think of a card plot, and I think you'll find that Di Vernon's emotional reaction serves you well. All right, let's continue on with something a little more larceny, a little more larcenous. I don't know if that's a word, but if there's larceny in your heart, you're going to enjoy the circus card trick. Let's take a look at what this is, the circus card trick. If you're looking for a trick more of like, maybe you want to get a bar bet in, win a drink, or, uh, you know, beat your friends out of some candy, or get your kids to do some chores, here, here's a good one. The circus card trick. Let me, let me just walk you through it as I do it. You have your friend pick a card. There's the card. We'll suggest the first key card placement. So there's the card. It's really the same trick as before, the think stop one. But here's what you do. You deal through the pack and deal this until you see your key card. Of course, the card after... The key card is going to be the spectator selection. You're going to want to remember the selection. So there's my key card. There's the selection. I know it's the two of spades, but I keep dealing. I keep dealing past it. So I keep dealing cards. And you've told your spectator not to tell you. You say, if you see your card, don't tell me. But I think, I think the next card I turn over is going to be your card. In fact, I'd be willing to bet on it. So yeah, you bet your spectator that the next card they, that you turn over will be their card. Once they've taken your bet, well, the next card you turn over is their card. You turn it over right on the table. Yeah, just the one right next to your key card, right? So this is the sucker bet. You get them to thinking you're going to turn this card over. And the denouement, you turn over their selected card. You win the bet. Drinks on the house. Candy for the bowl. Winner, winner, chicken dinner the circus card trick. All right, this last one is a winner. It's one of my favorite key card tricks and you'll wanna know the top card. So your key card is uh, the top card of the deck. In this case, we're just using the Joker for easy memory. Your spectator selects a card. The placement is as before. They pick a card, cut the deck at that point, table the upper half, and then have them replace their selection there. That will put their card, in this case, above the key card, above instead of below. I do like to have complete cuts made for this trick. This doesn't rearrange the order of the cards. It just moves the chain around. And what I mean by that is the key card will still be above the selection. Now what that means is if I cut the deck at that point, and I would do this with the hands in this fashion away from the spectator's eyes. But if I cut the deck at that point, bringing the key card back to the top, the spectator selection is now on the face of the deck. So as I do this, I'm explaining to the spectator, I'm going to use a magic spell to find your cards. Yep, that's right, a magic spell. So as I explain I'm using a magic spell, I spell their card one letter at a time per card. So for seven of spades, I'm gonna do this. S-E-V-E-N-O-F-S-P-A-D-E-S. 
Now, it would be enough to do this. You could cut the deck at this point and spell to their card. Say, yeah, I use a magic spell. S-E-V-E-N, seven, O-F of, S-P-A-D-E-S, seven of spades. That's a good trick. Let's make this a great trick. And here's how you make this a great trick. So once again, we've got the spectator selection secretly on the face of the deck by cutting the key card to the top. We're going to do the same procedure, spelling that card one letter at a time secretly. So again, we're S-E-V-E-N-O-F-S-P-A-D-E-S. -E -E so I spell the card S-E-V-E-N-O-F-S-P-A-D-E-S. -E now I spell the next card. So I keep running them, but I'm going to spell the next card in line, which is the nine of hearts. N-I-N-E-O-F-H-E-A-R-T-S. And now I cut the deck at that point as I'm explaining the magic spell. Watch closely, Nine of Hearts. You name the second card you spelled, not their selection, the second one you spelled. They will say, no, that's not my card. And you say, oh, I didn't say it was your card. I just said the Nine of Hearts. But hey, spectator, if that was your card, look at this trick. N-I-N-E, nine, O-F, it's a magic spell. H-E-A-R-T-S, nine of hearts. That should be a nice surprise. And then you tell your spectator, yeah, it also works with any card. What card did you pick, spectator? And guess what? Their card's ready to spell now. So when you spell S-E-V-E-N, seven, O-F of, S-P-A-D-E-S, their card lands on the second spell, and that is a mind blower. That's the, that's the double speller, which I was uh, enlightened to by George, Gar George Schindler and Frank Garcia in their Magic with Cards book. This is a great trick that will serve you well. Enjoy it. And with that wonderful revelation, we're going to end this look at the key card, the placement, the tricks, and take, take note that all the books that I mentioned here are really worth your attention, going back to Professor Hoffman's Modern Magic, the Di Vernon Inner Secrets books, those are great. Magic with Cards by Garcia and Schindler, and of course, Royal Road to Card Magic, that's a classic. All of them should be on your library, and uh, I'll quit talking, give you time to go get those books and start reading. I sign off with a thank you once again. I appreciate you, your time, your energy. Thank you very much, and hey guys, I'll see you on the next one. Ciao for now.